Tesla CEO Elon Musk lashed out at George Soros for uh, putting human civilization under threat during a podcast with the radio host Joe Rogan. This is what he said, and I quote, In my opinion, Soros fundamentally hates humanity. He's doing things that erode the fabric of civilization. Musk uh, expressed his concern about Soros's action, uh, which he believes are eroding the foundations of civilization. Musk also highlighted the issue of uh, electing district attorneys who refuse to prosecute crimes, which he sees are problems affecting cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco. Musk further elaborated on uh, Soros's approach, stating that uh, he recognized the importance of not necessarily changing laws, but rather altering how they are enforced. Let's in fact listen in to what Elon Musk said. It's humanity. That's my opinion. Really? Yeah. I mean, well, he's doing things that erode the fabric of civilization. You know, uh, getting DAs elected who refuse to prosecute. And in uh, the month of February 2023, External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar had alarmed the world about George Soros, where he termed him as a rich, old, dangerous man. Listen in. Mr. Soros is a... Uh, old, rich, opinionated person sitting in New York who still thinks that his views should determine how the entire world works. Now, if I could only stop at old, rich and opinionated, I would put it away. All right, to talk more about this, joining us on the show is Ambassador Suresh Kumar Goel, former diplomat, Savio Rodriguez, founder and editor-in-chief of the Goa Chronicles, also with us on the program, Sumit Peer, senior political commentator, joins us on the program as well. Last but not the least, Dr. Sharad Kohli, senior economist, uh, is with us on the program as well. Ambassador Goel, a very good afternoon to you, sir. I'll begin with you. Well, it seems we are not the only one who seem to be calling out George Soros. You know, there is fundamentally something wrong in the way he has used his influence and his money to, uh, you know, affect uh, things and affect cultures and traditions throughout the world. Uh, Vidit, uh, <clears throat> I think I'm not, I'm in the in the spat between uh, George Soros and Elon Musk. I'm, I'm on nobody's side. And I've seen the report in Open India, which is on where the editor in chief in Nupur Sharma. So we clearly know the political leanings of the story. Uh, now, having said this, uh, I have, I'm going to choose nobody's side between the two of them. Mm. But are we not all opinionated in our own sense when we give expression to what our views are and what we believe in and everything? George Soros may be opinionated, George Soros will be doing this thing, but uh, did we also not try and meet with him when Prime Minister uh, Modi visited the uh, USA because we were looking for him to invest in India at that time? Now, he does things in a different manner. Like everybody who makes money will have quite a few skeletons in the cupboard and there is no defense for them. But the point really here is, uh, it's a spat between Elon Musk and Joe Soros. It is George Musk uh, sorry, uh, it is Elon Musk calling uh, George Soros something, and George Soros will, I'm quite sure, tomorrow, depending upon what his mood is, will call Elon Musk something. I don't think I'm going to become part of that name calling. The only thing that I would say really here is, I don't see any harm in supporting pro-Palestinian groups, whether he does it through open network or whatever it is. In fact, I think, uh, it's again basically a fight by Palestinians. Now, I'm not, and again, I'm making a distinction between Hamas and Palestinians. Mm. And the Palestinians, because I know the history, how it was created, and how Palestinians were shortchanged in the process by the British. I know that. I have I've been dealing with the issue. And therefore, if somebody is supporting Palestinians in the fight for their own right to exist in their own land, I see no harm in that really. And I... Again, there are so many speculations here uh, in the story. Therefore, I would really say let this fact play out between the two of them. Uh, if Elon Musk wants to come to India with his money to invest in uh, our many, making other uh, uh, platforms for internet, etc., etc., let him come. If George Soros wants to come and 
invest in the electronic industry here, most welcome. But let them fight out their own spat between the two of them. That is where I will stop. Uh, hmm. really. Fair enough, sir. I appreciate and respect your opinion. Uh, we necessarily don't have to take sides. But uh, Sumit, it seems that George Soros has uh, already taken a side when it comes to India. And he's against the Prime Minister. Allow me a couple of uh, minutes to read excerpts. Uh, you know, from uh, some of the speeches and statements Mr. Soros has made in the past. First up, when the Adani, uh, you know, episode happened, he was quick to respond and say that Modi and business tycoon Adani are close allies. Their fate is intertwined. Adani is accused of stock manipulation and his stock collapsed like a house of cards. Obviously, he did not respond when the same stock went back up. Modi is silent on this subject, but he will have to answer questions from foreign investors and in parliament. Of course, uh, it's, it's uh, only a matter of intelligence that we also remind our viewers that a number of investments, big investments have flown into India ever since this remark was made. Another one uh, on nationalism that Mr. Soros uh, uh, made was nationalism far from being reversed uh, is making further headway in India. The biggest and most frightening setback, he said, came from the country of India, where a democratically elected Narendra Modi is creating a Hindu nationalist country, uh, imposing punitive measures on Kashmir, a semi-autonomous Muslim region, and threatening to deprive millions of Muslims of their citizenship. It's very, very clear, and it's very, very apparent, Sumit, he really doesn't know anything about the global south, and for that matter, India. Uh, Vinny, thank you for having me on your show. If I can start with Hindi, we have a saying called Asuri Pravritti, Danvi Pravritti. He is a walking talk to Asur Ardhadhana, you know, living and thriving on planet Earth. He is an enemy to the humanity. I'll start from his background. He was a Jew. He had a tough upbringing. He is the only Jew who is banned from entering Israel. You know what did he do when he was a child? He collaborated with Nazis and will tell them exactly where the Jews and he got money or a commission for that. That is how he did, how we did the upbringing. He is on record saying, I have put these many billion dollars to destabilize Modi. Who the hell is to talk about Modi? Modi is the democratically selected prime minister of the Republic of India, which is the largest democracy, where more than one billion people vote. Who is this old, dying old man to say, I want to replace Modi? Who is he? What is his business? If he's a businessman, let him control his business. What is his business in Kashmir? What is his business in the Kisan protest? What is his business in anything to everything to do with India? Who the hell he is that India should... Or, you know, India should answer international investors. You want to put your money in India? Do it. You don't want to go to hell. Who is bothered about you? And let me tell you more. We need this info lapse. I did a program last night. This info lapse has given a complete background how many jihadi and Islamist organizations he is funding. I'll tell you one. Muslim Brotherhood, George Soros. American Muslim Association, George Soros. Hamas, Hamas, George Soros. Hezbollah, George Soros. And not only that, uh, jamaat e islami George Soros, Salauddin, Sayyid Salauddin, Sayyid Salauddin, Hezbul Mujahideen, George Soros. Now, I did, I did that program on a digital channel yesterday. The very, the point showed all the proofs. The idea is when this person is supporting and supporting all kinds of people, when this person says that my prime minister, he doesn't like and he should, should not be in the office. Who is he? Who gives him that authority? When he's supporting all the organizations who are working to break up India and Mr. Musk is right, he's supporting all of them across the world. And now what the dangerous game is playing is supporting and getting elected those attorneys who will not enforce the law. So there's a law, there's a law, and he will not enforce it. He said, look, presidential candidature is the lowest return of money. Then is the senators, but the biggest return of money from is as the when you get the attorney selected, who will see the law but choose not to enforce it, who will let the migration happen. He believes in a border boundaryless world. He believes that his money and his his you know wealth should prosper. Isn't it wrong to say that he's the biggest donor of the Democratic Party? Is Am I wrong to say that his son visited White House 19 times? Possibly to have a masala tea. Maybe there's a good masala tea there. What was he doing 19 house? What is George Soros' son going to White House and meeting 19 times? He has pictures with Obama. He has pictures with Hillary Clinton. He has pictures with Biden. He has pictures with everybody who's a Democrat. And when Musk talks about that this person is the most eminent threat to the humanity, tell me, Vineet, Giving money to Hamas, what will Hamas do with it? What will Hezbollah do with it? How many house, schools is going Hamas and Hezbollah built? How many churches are they going to build? How many museums they are going to build? And how many books is Hassan Nasrullah going to write? You know everything. You know what hmm. do you mean by giving money to jihadis? Not only one, Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, Jamaat-e-Islami and 
Sayyid Salahuddin, Hizbul Mujahideen in India. So if this man is not dangerous, who the hell is dangerous? Mr. Jaishankar was absolutely right. When he called out the man, this man hates humanity, he hates a stabilized world. He thinks the world should be controlled by the deep state and he as his cronies should decide which government to come, which government not to come. If Modi ji is nationalistic, what is his problem? He is not a voter here, let him go and vote in Hungary or United States of America, wherever he votes. What is his business interfering in an election wherein one billion people vote and choose the leader? Who is he? What is his lokai? But he has a dangerous plan. He has announced that I put these many billion dollars to destabilize Prime Minister Modi. What more can you talk about intentions? He is funding Shaheen Bagh. He is funding the Kisan protest. He is funding all kinds of people and activities which are going against the India. And what is his business with Hezbollah Mujahideen? Why is he funding Al Jazeera, Islamic Brotherhood? What is his business with Jamaat Islami? What does Jamaat Islami know? And Sayyid Salahuddin doesn't run an NGO for the sake of God. You know what Sayyid Salahuddin does, right? And mm. after that, we still we, we still have doubts about this person. This person is God's wrath on planet Earth. The soon you open the earth will be a peaceful place. But I don't know how dangerous the sun is, but I know sun has been to White House 19 times. I, I have been asking this question to do what? Right. Dr. Kohli, why do you think uh, this man is important to the world? He's definitely not important to India. In 1992, he did indulge in some stock manipulation. Uh, you know, which helped him earn about two billion uh, pounds. Uh, but, uh, you know, that episode came to be known as the man who broke the back of, uh, the man who broke the bank of England. In 1996 also, there were some allegations against him in Finland, uh, where there was a financial crisis, which uh, largely precipitated because of his uh, business actions. He's made some investments in India as well in 2008, and he continues to indirectly uh, fund a lot of media outlets, small uh, outlets here and there. What? Why do you think this man is important uh, in the rest of the world? Well, really, the man is important because sometimes, you know, your business uh, starts earning from uh, negative moves. Or if I put it in a different way, negativity generates revenue. You know, that is the concept. So when, you know, when he did this arbitrage uh, in the British pound and we, when he broke the back of Bank of England, I think he probably thought that probably this is the way, do things which are negative, do things which the rest of the world doesn't do, or support op opposition, support, uh, you know, you know, uh, support the left wing, support the NGOs which are into nefarious activities, bring down the governments, support um, anti, uh, you know, national activities and so on and so forth. So he found that probably money can be made there as well. I don't think many people uh, have thought about making money from breaking the back of the banks or probably bringing down the governments or funding NGOs which are involved in anti-national uh, anti activities and so on and so forth. Not many people will make money out of it. People may have agendas to run. People may have propagandas to do. You might have your uh, other intentions, but then to be generating profits out of this activity is not everybody's cup of tea. So probably that is why uh, you know, this man is so important to answer your question uh, straight away. Uh, I think he's into a business which is of a different kind. But having said that, you know, as they say, nobody is always wrong and nobody is always right. You know, Elon Musk, out of the statements that he makes, I'm not a big fan of Elon Musk, by the way. But sometimes, you know, some people say things which are in the context. And, you know, it it comes out to be true. So when he says that he is... He's a dhabba on humanity and he works against humanity. I mean, I, can, I can't agree more, more than that to Elon Musk for once. I can agree to him. I mean, out of all the things that he does, for once we have to agree that this man is actually against humanity. So wherever there are humane things being done, wherever there is there are good things being done, if I put it in very simple terms, he has to bring it down. And if that bringing down, economically speaking, financially speaking, brings you profits, I think that motivates him even more. So I think his sole intention, I mean, I call him giving not George sorrow, Soros, but he brings sorrow to people. You know, his surname turns out to be the other sorrow. So he's bringing sorrow to most of the world, to some part of the world, really. Well, he is, he is giving that moment of happiness to the people who oppose good things, to the people who oppose development. For example, if we take India, even if I want to give an apolitical statement, uh, uh, Vineet, I mean, for all the development that the government has done, I mean, this man has to say that Prime Minister Modi is against so and so and so and so, whatever promise that he wants to make. 
obviously it shows that there is an agenda there is a propaganda and behind that after the hindenburg episode vinay it is quite clear that this man wants to make money out of negativity that's what i started with and that's what i'll wrap up this statement of mine that make money revenue out of negativity on some brownie points by supporting people who do not support development by supporting people who are anti national by supporting people who are into nefarious activities as sumit described you know his his funding so many so many terrorist organizations so what could be the intention the intention is you know when you have 100 dollars to invest with it and out of that 70 dollars go goes to generate revenue the remaining 30 dollars goes to support other activities so it 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 brings you name and it makes you feel important i think that's the answer to your question really hmm savio you've been a strong critic of uh, what george soros has done and how he's in fact uh, you know perceived india uh, george soros is also one of those people savio who's taken great pride in calling himself uh, as somebody who is responsible for regime collapses in the past as well do you think he has aspirations of such sort with india as well we need <coughs> we need to describe george soros in a statement <laughs> george soros is an economic terrorist george soros is not running a war against humanity that's not what he is doing he is basically playing the game of economics and he has only one motive and that one motive of his is to make as much money as possible now he's been doing that because that's the case of of success that he has got now if you look at the stanford study that was was done in 1993 look at what it says okay it refers to the august 23 1993 cover story that was done in the business week and it says on the title that was the man who moves markets paints the picture of an investor whose manipulation of the press is matched only in his ability to manipulate his financial empire by far soros's greatest gains however have been destabilizing currencies on the global market time and again when a nation is in a monetary crisis soros is there to give currency the last nudge and then profits from the from the entire plummet you know the downfall of the currency now you talked about sumit talked about him being very close to white house i have with me a document which he had written to bill clinton's wife at that point of time when she was the secretary of state and uh, spoke about albania and how he has actually directed her that this is what you should be doing in albania and, and we are there for you as a third party support so he is somebody who is who's interested in chaos he is interested in anarchy he will support opposite poles in order for him to gain from what is happening in a crisis situation he at most times is is creating the crisis so for him it's all about money you know he's invested close to 100 million us dollars in india as far as startups are concerned hmm. over the last 5 years which we have exposed as well he's invested in so many other companies in india now why are we not going after george soros's investments why are we allowing it's the same problem i had with the israelis when i was in israel when i asked them how come george soros is investing into companies in israel the hmm. fact is an economic terrorist is main aim is to destabilize a country and therefore works with questionable uh, you know people or questionable organization questionable ngos to work to just one agenda the agenda is not against humanity the agenda is he doesn't care about humans firstly all he cares about is money he needs humanity to fuel his money interest he's the perfect bond villain the perfect bond villain that you've seen in bond movies he's got the money he's got the manipulation of the media and he manipulates the media so well you can hear everybody talk about george soros george soros like he is the 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 lucifer in the world at this point of time hmm. but george soros couldn't care less what is george soros's main aim with india india is a growing country 
India is growing to becoming a superpower. George Soros needs a hold, a foothold, a strong foothold into India. With Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he is finding a little bit of a roadblock into that relationship. He is hoping to have a regime change so that he brings in a favorable government in order right. to push his business interests. Okay. He could get less who the opposition but, is. You know, I also find that a bit uncanny and odd, Ambassador Goyal, that uh, you know somebody who's you know, passionate about making money, is a billionaire himself, uh, you know, would want to antagonize a country like India, you know, which seems to be going up the curve uh, when it comes to investment and returns. You know, Vinay, that is what actually surprises me. I mean, I am listening to all this and I'm clearly seem to be a minority of one among four here, uh, three who are absolutely totally against what George Soros is all about. And I, who want to keep a distance from this kind of a debate, discuss or talking about uh, the traits of other business people, what they are doing, what they're doing. For me, basically, this feel, uh, this is not politics. In politics, I have my own value system, and there is not a question of whether what you're doing is uh, legally right or legally wrong. There, I think ethics come into play much, much more strong, much stronger, uh, more strongly uh, than they're now. Even in economics, the, the ethics matter. But here, you have the whole group of business people from the USA who have done well in their own in their own way uh, in terms of making money. And when they make money, basically, in they make money basically by riding rough on competition. I recall many stories in even in the USA, the auto industry, where Ford, other companies, they have really just pushed each other out of the way in terms of grabbing the market uh, in the country or or even the market in the other countries. We we don't seem to question at that time uh, that they are actually trying to compete each other out of the way because that is how the business operates there really. So what I'm saying really here is if Josh Soros wants to get a foothold in India, why should Narendra Modi be coming in the way unless they are seen in a different political uh, light. Unless Josh Soros is seen as supporting other political cause and not India. And that is a problem. Frankly speaking, I have found in my whole life, really, even as a diplomat, that when it's a question of business and economy, the dollar knows no color. It just knows where actually it should go in terms of returns on investment. ROI is the most important thing. And I'm quite certain that if Josh Soros were to find a more uh, palatable, should I say, or more favorable, et cetera, et cetera, his, uh, environment in India for investment, he would come. He's, why is he investing in the startups? And Sergio, Sergio said, why doesn't the government go after those investments? Yes, let them go heavy on the startups where Josh Soros has gone. And tell mm -hmm. them that we own certain kind of startups and not the startups which you, you start. What what kind of philosophy are we talking about? Hmm. I really don't understand yeah, this. To that yeah, yeah, just I'll I'll come to you, Savio. I'll come to come to you, Savio. Let me let me let me just let me just get uh, Sumit's reaction to what Ambassador Goel has, uh, as well as what you said. But Sumit, it it seems to be very odd to me that somebody who's uh, you know looking to uh, up the game when it comes to his investments will have a feud with India. Then then and then it's not really about money, Sumit. It's something else, right? It's it's perhaps ideology then. Let me be clear on George Soros. He is part of Deep State. Deep State blames in no boundaries. They want their economic interests to prevail at any cost. They want those puppet regimes to come. They want a Malijuli Sarkar to come. They want the people who will talk of coalition Dharma and close their eyes. That is what Deep State wants. And Soros is doing that. He's not a businessman. He's an economic terrorist. What Savio rightly described him. Because he wants to use this terror to make maximum money for himself. He doesn't care about humanity. I agree with him all on that. He doesn't give a shit to what the humanity goes. That is his real colors. He's the only Jew who is not who is not allowed to enter Israel, being a Jew. You can imagine. Well, let me tell you something. We let hmm. Americans are cut through. I work for American companies, right? IBM, Tesla, you know, you talk of Apple, you talk of HP, you talk of Deloitte, you talk of ENY, you talk of a lot from them. How many of them support Islamic Brotherhood? How many of them fund Hamas? How many of them fund Sayyid Salahuddin? How many of them fund some Jamaat Islami? How many of them find, uh, find is, is American Islamic Muslim Association? How many of them fund Hezbollah? 
Now, when you look at this man, he is using this terror as a knife, putting on your head and using his money where he finds entrance. He says, "Look, tow my line. Otherwise, I will leash these people on you. I'll unleash the army of Lucifer on you." That is what he does. He uses his money to create terror, to topple regimes, and to get the regimes of which choice there, so that his agendas can win, and he can literally mine money from the country. Name me two American companies, two American companies out of 1,000 top multinationals who are funding Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, Islam, uh, Islamic right. Brothers. Sumit, Sumit, we've completely run out of time. Let me quickly just take, quickly take concluding thoughts from Dr. Kohli and uh, Savio as well, and then we wrap up. Dr. Kohli, <coughs> I think. Uh, you know, Ambassador Goyal, uh, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm glad that Ambassador Goyal is playing a very neutral role here, you know, for, for a very difference of opinion from the rest of the three panelists, including me. And, you know, but, but the fact of the matter is if somebody is in the business of making money from bringing down government, there's, there's, there's no, and, you know, Ambassador Goyal also raised a point that how is Modi an obstruction for, uh, for George Soros? Well, the answer is, to that question is very simple. Because Modi does not support a puppet government. Modi does not support somebody sitting in America and trying to control what happens in India. So since Modi doesn't agree to that, obviously George Soros has to support another party. So this, I mean, this is an open secret. I mean, I'm sure Ambassador Goyal as an afterthought would agree with me. This is an open secret that George Soros does want people to be, to be under him. He should be in a position to order. He should be in a position to influence decisions whenever he wants. So that right, the money right, Doctor Kohli, you're absolutely right. Yeah, but but yeah, no, sorry, we have run out of time, Savio. But he's 92 years old; he should be retired in uh, Nantucket Island. What is he doing, trying to, in fact, uh, you know, uh, throw out regimes? <laughs> Joe Biden is not a puppet. Please, Savio. At 95 years of age. George Soros continues to be an economic terrorist. And let me answer what the ambassador said. It's very important that one gets it in a right perspective. Now, the companies that I've been tracking where George Soros has invested money into, sir, are mostly companies that are in the agri-tech business and in the distribution business, where data is the most important uh, commodity, not so much the products that they bring up. So that is one thing that George Soros has been investing through startups. He's very keen on data. He wants to know <laughs> what people at a particular level that he's collating or collecting this data, his companies are doing that. Because that's the game. The more information and data you have, the more manipulation you can do, sir. So an investment of 100 million in startup for somebody like George Soros is nothing. But he's doing that. And he's doing that with a purpose. He's an economic terrorist and you might say <laughs> everybody has a right to do business. Business is fine. Economic terrorism is not. It's not viable for any nation to support an economic terrorist. All right. Okay. Well, he's an economic terrorist and that's, that's a term that I heard uh, for the first time when Savio mentioned it a few months ago on our channel and appreciate uh, Ambassador Goel's uh, point of view as well. Uh, we love him for his uh, independent and subjective point of view. Nothing against him. Of course, everyone has their own way of looking at things. And it was a debate which obviously got perspectives from both sides and that's why it's a healthy one. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.